Welcome to the podcast. Woohoo! Mighty Duenya. Um, I am one half of your um, lost civilization theorizer, Solo <laughs> Mighty Duenya, joined by. Oh man, I gotta come up with a cool one. Lost civilization theorizer? That's really good. I can only think about Chick fil A stuff. You're a Gen Zer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your 30 count Chick fil A demolisher. Gen Alpha. Gen, yeah, I like that. Gen Alpha. Gen, so Gen Alpha. Alpha is the name is the of, thing? The, of the, like, kind of the babies being born right now. They are part of Gen Alpha. Oh, shit. I got to crack out of Gen Alpha. As far as, yeah. Gen um, Alpha. Uh, Jacob Scott Thomas Bertrand, soon to have my son, Jimmy Jacob Scott Thomas Bertrand. Here's, here's something that Gen I was Alpha. thinking about, Jacob, as you were mentioning uh, a sensation of feeling your blood go through your body. <laughs> It made me think of, um, I'm reading this book right now, uh, The Jaguar and the Shaman. Um, And it's this book about ancient civilizations and their utilization of certain herbs and like medicinal type stuff to either heal or, uh, you know, kind of connect with with spirituality, uh, mainly like ayahuasca. Okay. And ayahuasca just in itself is... Um, it's like the tea, right? It translates... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it in a bunch of different ways. It translates to vine of the dead. And it was Lovely. used... It was used... No, no, no. It was used as a... And I mean, in, in Eastern tradition, and this is kind of something... It's interesting that you say that because in Western tradition, we don't really ponder death much. It's kind of like, especially because of Christianity, it's just seen as like heaven is the next step. And we'll kind of figure that out later. Yeah. Whereas in a lot of Eastern traditions, and especially like indigenous, like these ones are talking about certain Southern American, African, Mexican area Mm -hmm. um, tribes, they actually wanted to be proactive and say like, once we pass on in this life, we are like, quote unquote, burdened by the plane that we're living on right now. So we should be proactive and start to make that blend now. Because basically... What they're saying is once you pass, your body was just like a, your soul still lives on, right? Yes. And your soul lives, lives on and we're able to interact with the world that we're living on right now. As souls. As souls. So we should be proactive and start to, you know, bridge the gap while we're here living. Kind of what, what I was wondering was in a lot of these different civilizations that have um both uh, like that have all kind of utilized certain t- properties of these drugs a lot of them kind of come back to similar things like when you look at uh ancient egyptians and some of our native indigenous tribes here in the americas a lot of them have certain t- similar gods similar uh, like gods that do the same thing. So like, for example, in ancient Egypt, there is a god, a half bird, half man god that um, basically speaks to, uh, that is the god of the living, that speaks to the virtue of life um, so that we value our time on earth, on this plane that we have been so graciously kind of given, given the chance time. that uh, to to experience. And there's there's you know, depictions of this God as well in, in the ancient native tribes. And then there's also like... He's also on uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Yeah, also on a Yu-Gi-Oh card. So there's <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> and I'm just wondering, what do you think that's about? Like, like when why different do- civilizations who have no contact with each other come up with like very similar gods. Yeah, like there's this thing in in... So because of the idea of reincarnation kind of being present in a lot of these civilizations, there's also the idea of this woman known as the brain smasher. Who, who oh my God, is she evil? Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, it's, okay. it's kind of like once it's decision time, once you, once you pass on, you go through this thing. And this is another thing that both have in common. 
once you pass on, and this is, I'm speaking to just really both Egyptian and native, mm-hmm. um, native, what we would call like South American. No, no, no. Like what we would call Alabama, like, like, oh, right, okay, okay. like, like that area right there. Mm-hmm. Um, they both have these like materialized representations of um, Orion, the Orion's belt. Okay. The pyramids of Giza, the three pyramids of Giza are perfectly placed to resemble Orion's belt, Orion's belt the three stars. And in the pyramids of Giza and similarly to some of like the mound structures here in, in modern America, there are tunnels pointed up beaming uh up from the from the sleeping chambers or like from the passing chambers to the leftmost star of the Os- of of Orion basically symbolizing this journey that you take once you pass you get shot up to that left star of Orion and you either you know because of the you know your karmic like your life it's either decided then whether or not you can kind of experience the heavens and experience like the fruits of being a good person or you can also like there's also this this winding waterway as as uh, as the natives called it or you know the path of, of something else as, as the egyptians called it yeah this is like when they put your heart on the scale and it has to be lighter than the feather okay i don't know i'm oh. not too sure I, I don't know about all this. You know, I, I did know. a book report on uh, Egyptian religion in sixth grade, and that's oh, okay, like I made a scale, a wooden scale, and that was my part. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about, though, right? The heart so, being okay, yeah, yeah. No so, so, <laughs> so, so basically, so like, and, and the natives also had this idea of of a brain smasher, and, and as the as the Egyptians did. So, but what does the brain smasher do? The brain smasher, you know, when you're it, it wipes your memory. Basically, it's it's a it's the Men in Black like. But, so, to to put you back on this plane. But what's the purpose of erasing the memory? Um, to to I well, you know, as someone who doesn't you know know too much, I want to say that the point of wiping one's memory is so that you understand the virtue of this life. If you know that, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, get another, um, one, get, get, another, another, get, another. One, get another one, get another one, then it kind of defeats the purpose. Of, oh, you'd get into uh, like fuck it mode. Yeah, you kind of it would it would disturb the balance of of what we have um, going on. Now, with that being said, like even just the idea of reincarnation kind of implores that That'd idea. Be sick, that would be like, super it, cool. It kind of even even that, but. But what do you think that is? Because I have my own theories as to why some of these civilizations have similar, like why a lot of them have dragons, why a lot of them have these things, even though, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I know um, in more like Chinese mythology, like the the dragons look a lot different than like the English, Mm -hmm. where the English had had, what do they call it? Like Like Viking type. Six appendages, I guess. It was like the two feet and then the wings. Which yeah. I guess is biologically kind of impossible. Like no other animal has that. I guess that's never been that's never happened before. So that one's kind of unlikely. So but, what do you think it is? I don't know. I think for like dragons specifically, it's like it could have just been cool. No, just like someone saw a big lizard, a Komodo dragon, and the story gets embellished and da da da. So when it comes to stuff that like religion, it's hard to be like these people had no contact. Like how would they have? just randomly had the same idea if there wasn't like some weight to, you know, what they believed in. So it makes me want to believe it. I think reincarnation would be freaking sick. That would be super cool. Yeah, a lot of what they speak to is ayahuasca, is like, is just the similar experiences that these people have under the influence of these drugs. And even, even like some of our most famous like thinkers, like Plato, um, these Greek guys and these guys all use certain drugs. Really? What drugs did Plato use? They no, they all use these psychedelic like DMT, really? um, ayahuasca type drugs. And and this isn't, I mean, I've never tried. This isn't an endorsement by any means. Um, I guess it just kind of is it it is curious to me how America, who is really kind of like the leader in thought, mm. um doesn't like we don't we don't know about everything 
Mm. And it's interesting that we kind of like to lead the conversation and think that our version is right when like there's, you know, ancient civilizations in the Amazon that we haven't even begin to like, look at. Into. I And I think that that's the thing. The word shouldn't necessarily be tap yeah, into, yeah. right? But, but yeah, how can we, how can we claim to ha- have the right way to do it when... And all of this is coming kind of coming about because I was listening to this conversation by this guy Graham Hancock and he was he's a he studies lost civilizations. There's a potential catastrophe, what? imminent catastrophe coming towards Earth that um that we like might prediction type thing? Yeah, prediction type thing that we might just kind of might might be right under our nose. So the Earth is in this thing called the Torrid Meteor Stream, okay? And <laughs> believe me, and, no, no. So the <laughs> no, Torrid no. Meteor Stream is basically this thing that the Earth passes through twice a year in June and November, and it is a really big asteroid, a comet that came into our universe uh, a bunch, a bunch of years ago, and exploded. Um, and the remnants have kind of left left this asteroid belt that our Earth passes through twice a year, and okay. it's like when you see the the, the shooting meteor showers. Yes, that's it. That is what we're passing through. We've and, already been through it once this year. Uh, we've already been through it. Yeah, once this year. Gotcha. And and the there's a couple of pretty big chunks chunks in that asteroid belt that. Big little knobs. Because as civilians, as as members of the world, we haven't really been affected by. Okay. Um, like humans haven't been affected in the last like hundred or so years. I think the last event that happened was in 1908 or nine, nine, yeah, 1908 in in um, Siberia. It was called the Tunguska event. Oh it was basically this this Tunguska. this this area in Siberia that flattened an area the size of London. And, and whoa, and this, this, and this was stuff. a comet that didn't even hit the ground. It exploded in the air in the atmosphere, and kind of like the remnants destroyed the stuff on the ground. But there's no way like NASA or whatever wouldn't catch it. Oh, this thing's coming. Let's shoot our Lago Bazaar ray beam at it and blow it up before it. You don't think that would happen? I guess because the space is so vast, there, there's poss- there's I don't, uh, as someone who isn't a scientist, I don't know how well equipped we are to shoot. We haven't needed to. Yeah, but they made a lot of movies about it. Clearly, it's on everyone's minds. I mean, you seen <laughs> yeah. Armageddon, bro? This is true. Yeah. The whole point of this conversation by this guy, Graham Hancock, was to say that um, if we were to get smacked by a comet, the civilizations that would actually be best off are the ones that are in the business of survival, like in the Amazon and stuff like that. And we would kind of just be screwed. Like we wouldn't know what to do. We have too much luxury. We just have too much luxury, yeah. And we might end up being one of the next lost civilizations oh. who they tell stories about. Um, about, you know, they could fly. They would carry around their dogs they could, they could and bags. T- yeah, they could... They had these tablets where they could speak to people across the earth. They would put saline in their lips. Yeah, they put saline in their lips and freaking whoopee cushions in their under boobies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Dude, I, that's a trippy thing to think about that we would be the lost civilization. They'd find all my magic cards and be like, this man was a genius <gasps> building his deck like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you think? Well, so that. You don't think of- you would survive? No, but it kind of leads into another interesting conversation in that myths actually, myths and lore actually help pass on ideas better than than other means. Like religion and these certain spiritual beliefs have stood the test of time even through changes in language and changes in other, um, you know, forms of communication and how actually mythology um like if we want to change certain things we we might we we should maybe create myth to to have it 
put it in like story form so it's more digestible. Yeah, like when it comes to AI and handling that, maybe the best way is to kind of like show iRobot every week. The opposite, like oh. show empathy, show lots of empathy, and manifest that way, like towards the AI. Like, oh, he's so misunderstood, the AI who wants no, to kill us all. No, no, no. I think, like, start to have people understand that the way that we use AI should be in in, in a way that exhibits empathy and… Oh, no and, basilisk. Yeah, no basilisk. Like, when I think… And that is the… And that, I think, is the main difference between, or one of the biggest differences between Eastern and Western culture is that Western culture, more often than not, is personal gain on behalf, or, or like, it, it skews more personal gain-wise. Mm. You know, everything that you were given, God created everything. He created the the lakes and the rivers and the mountains, and then he created people, and he said, all of this is for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I created all of this for you. And in Eastern cultures, a lot of the time it's it's said like, we are all in this together and your place on this earth is actually just to kind of like upkeep and you are a, 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 a servant to the, to the earth and the elements. And it's more of a, a what I would deem a community. Um, we all kind of rise up uh, situation because because the way I see it is that you know as people you know dating pre Christianity um pre pre most of when people got onto the earth and and we've kind of had this conversation before the first things that they theorized were like when they were saying what is all of this about the first things that they pointed to were gods yeah. right and then they wanted cool shit. And then they said like, yeah, God is fine and all, but also I want my life here to be swank as well. Uh -huh. And I think through that process, that kind of coincides a lot of the times with um, the need for, you know, colonizers at that time. Like capitalistic mindset. To, no, no, no. To, I mean, to for capitalism or whatever, or for, but, but really through uh, like, like, um, the mass uh, kind of change in religion that they that they felt needed to to you know process over. I think capitalism kind of bleeds into that um, in in a way of like uh, all of these people using uh, when this is kind of like a big reach around, but like using certain tactics to. Um, get ahead in society, bring mm -hmm. others down, right? All in, in the name of, you know, like, getting rich. I started, I, I uh, used to think, or not used to think, I just started reading this book. Um, it's called, like, The Birth of Capitalism, or, like, The Foundation of Capitalism. Mm -hmm. And this person who writes, this, it's in my fucking car, but uh, they basically say, like, capitalism is a very new thing. Like, it's not a, uh, it's not something that's been around for like a super, super long time. But we just think that it has because everyone's like, oh, why wouldn't you in the name of like progress and getting ahead and like wanting more, like you would just use the tools of capitalism to achieve that. Where like, because we think like, oh yeah, they've always done that. They think capitalism is like as old as, you know, when people had greed. Um, but and And so, so then it's, you it's have to correct thing. me you'll have yeah, to correct yeah. me because capitalism are are you just saying that the like the label for capitalism is is not the the same as greed and and whatnot like what are like what, what is, is capitalism? capitalism in in this book's definition and to your to your best you know I haven't gone there yet I'm only two chapters in. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. What is yeah, your definition? I don't. Of I don't. Capitalism? I don't have much um, to say about it. I, as far as I understand, capitalism is the utilization of big corp to advance an individual, one individual's capital, like 
it's it capitalization is making sure that I have the most mm. having the most money. I guess like that's that's what I would equate it to. Let's see. It's like a I've I've yeah I guess like, like a, a business a process a a business process a a a way to delegate. The business. There's always like a way. Whenever I've read definitions of capitalism, it has to do with like the, how the workers get paid. Like the workers are paid. Oh, fuck. There's a fucking term I can't think of. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Do you you want to like jump in as well? Define capitalism, kind of you the way you defined it. It's also you can say that it's when there's a economic or political system where it's controlled by a private owner for profit. Mm. So like the whole mm. system is controlled with the intention of this group profiting profiting off of it yeah. so okay. as opposed to as opposed to like it just being all equal as so, opposed to systems in which the money is being made on uh, for something else right right like so f- socialism is saying the money is actually getting all made for you yeah. for you people so how could capitalism be a new thing isn't that what like ancient rome or greek uh, structure was built off of like capitalism in general. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. So when you say that it's capitalism is a new thing, how new is it? How new is this book saying that maybe capitalism has been around for? Uh, like nineteenth century, the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. Okay. I what was what was happening in the eighteen hundreds? Was there like a specific event that that started the want of or the need of capitalism? We're not yet, not there yet. Okay, well, we'll discuss this in a. I just, a, yeah, yeah, in a few future future episode. No, but I just thought it was really like interesting. The, the maybe a misconception or maybe like a Mandela effect where yeah, most people I totally think, thought like, oh yeah, why would capitalism not like this whole idea of like a private entity, private corporation, like hiring out workers to work for them, and they pretty much gain all the profit, and they're just paid for their labor. Like, I mean, that sounds like a lot yeah, of a lot like, of early religions. So how does it not? I'm I'm guess I I'm just curious as to I wonder if. Maybe it has to do with like the money aspect, like literally the monetary system. Maybe that's what they're saying with capitalism. Yeah, maybe I, feel I don't like know. But things- it was, it's basically just saying this book was was asserting like we think capitalism has been around for a long time because that's it's so ingrained in our brains. We're like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you do that? That is how you make the most money. That is how you get ahead the quickest. Mm-hmm. So why would you know earliest level humans, you know? Way back when, why would they not have that same pro- thought process? You know, this is the quickest way to get ahead. This mm-hmm. is the best way to gain power. You know, do you, um, are you a capitalist? I benefit from capitalism. So, yeah, I guess you are. I mean, so do you. Not me, dude. Yeah. No, I'm a really? nonprofit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an NGO. Yeah. I'm an NGO. I'm a non governmental organization. We're grassroots. Yeah. Grassroots. If you yeah. own a rental, does that make you capitalist? Yeah. Really? Yeah. If you own like a if you I mean, if you own a property and then rent it out, that's capitalist? It's capitalist for sure. Fuck. Capitalist. <laughs> you dirty capitalist. What do you think about like is it a weird phenomena? I was I was like it was just describing this like weird phenomenon that like at any given moment I could and it sounds weird and but it like at any given moment I could look up my name on Twitter right now and just mm. see all of these people giving their two cents on who I am yeah. uh, without ever having met me or without ever having you know really known me mm. and for you the same is there like what do you think about that in in a way not grateful ungrateful but just you know, when it comes to, ha- has it ever impeded on your life or or been an inconvenience? Because it's easy. You're you're the type of person who is not really on social media much, anyways. Yeah. So, how much for someone who's not on social media does it impede in your kind of like day to day life? Is it something that you feel the effects of? Is it something? That with certain things like relationships and 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 people theorizing on that front, yeah. is that odd? Like nobody, I like I don't know, Jordan and Monica. Like, do y'all? What does that seem like to you guys? Like the idea that you guys look on Twitter and see these people, like, 
oh, I want to see Jacob with this person, or I want to see Shola with this person, or we want to hear about Jacob and Shola about this. Wait, I'll, first I'll pitch it to Jacob, but I guess one, I don't think about it too much because I don't, I'm not on social media too much. It, ha- it definitely has impacted my life only negatively, just from like <laughs> past experiences that I've had, like with relationships. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one hundred percent. Only in the negative. Um, one thing I never in the pot. Never like. How how could it ever be in the positive? I mean, shit, bro. If there's if some producer was like, oh, oh I want to see what Jacob Burton's like because of what oh, people okay. are saying about him on Twitter. Let me see what Social Madi Duena is okay. like on Twitter. You know, yeah, yeah. and uh, they go on, and someone's like, oh my god, Shola loves dogs. Like da da da, and he's like, I knew he was perfect for this multi-billion dollar dog movie I was Got casting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, sure, that could be a positive, but okay. the one thing that, like, I get in my head about is I lately don't, I mean, I've always felt this way, but more so, like, I really hate the feeling of being tracked or, like, people know where I am. Uh, People that you know or people that you don't know? All. Oh, okay. Like, if I'm somewhere, okay. like, I just want to be where I am and just not think about, like, the people I'm not with or, like, the rest of whatever the fuck's going on. Like, I'm doing what I'm doing and, like, I want to be immersed in that. And whenever I, you know, meet new people and, you know, we take pictures or whatever, I don't really care. I mind taking pictures. Um, but I always think, like, fuck. They know where I am. They know where I am. <laughs> someone's going to tag me. And, like, or even just, like, having, like, a, like, a list of, like, the places I've been through Instagram, basically. Or, like, through pictures people have taken with me. Like, oh, he was here or there. Like, he's he's been there. Oh, but then he's been to this place. Like, da-da-da. I don't like that feeling. I don't know why. I think it's just… I just don't like feeling tracked. You so, have, you've, never, you ever, you've never been on one of those star tours in Beverly Hills where you drive up to Hugh Jackman's house? No. To his, it, to his, like, to the outside of his gates of his property and you go, That was Hugh Jackman's house! <laughs> no, I filmed… I filmed a short film at, like, Leonardo DiCaprio's… Like neighbor's house one time when I was like 10. Oh. And a Star Tours bus came yeah. and like drove by. And I remember thinking that was fucking weird. Yeah, weird. Have and you, you ever you guys? Oh. But like you've never what? Do you think about it a lot? Social media? Or yeah, like that that aspect of like people talking about you all the time and like I mean you got a fucking movie coming out. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think I think in in recent months I have been thinking I've had more of a nihilistic view on social media in the sense that I'm kind of like… It doesn't mean anything. No, nah, not it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but like matter. no matter what, people are going to be like angry about some shit. Like mm. someone yeah. will always find… And that and that mm. thing most often will be the thing that like is fun to run away with at least in social media. Like I think right now… Uh, social media and and news has skews very like clickbaity, and mm. I've and I've noticed even like even in our own podcast, like we'll make we'll have an hour long segment and we'll have one joke about you know Tanner and early on, like I remember, like we were just joking around oh. and then people started to make like a story about it. Yeah, and it's like. It, it made me, and I think those were the earliest remnants of me being like, wait, the stuff that I say has some sort of holding value mm-hmm. to other people. And also, those people don't know me and are using that mal- maliciously. Yeah. And that kind of like no, 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 you and weird. Tanner. And, I was, and yeah. I was also like, and also, I'm 18. Like, yeah. w- w- very odd on that front. And then on the relationship front, very odd to have like, and then I think this is kind of just as we move forward in our like public lives because it's kind of inevitable the bigger and bigger that we get. Like it is such a weird phenomenon, bro. Such a weird phenomenon to have like partners um, or even myself, I'm sure for the other you know side, being a partner who people are just constantly talking about. Yeah. And just like, the feeling, unless you are not on social media, the inescapable feeling of being like, maybe I'll just see some random shit one day that may not even be true. And that's the kind of that's the kind of the thing that that trips me up is that sometimes there is there are intrusive thoughts or like mad fears that that you like develop or like insecurities that you develop 
off of things that are not real. Mm-hmm. Off of like off of someone saying some shit online or like or yeah. It, and it's just kind of like something that honestly is I I I come to a fault a lot of the times because there's very few people who have that kind of who have that who have that experience and know what that is like. And like even talking to my own parents who I'm who like are kind of like I don't know. They're like I don't know, dude, just don't pay attention. I, don't, I, I guess, guess yeah, yeah, I guess don't pay attention to it. Um but also what I see with a lot of people my age is kind of like the the toxic relationship the need to check yeah the need to be refreshing all the time and to be checking how hot am i how Mm -hmm. much do people care about me and i feel blessed to kind of not necessarily need that just yet but i'm also scared about in a second if shit's about to be popping off on all ends you know um just like keeping the toes grounded and all of that. Yeah. Like, I feel like I've definitely, it's taken, you know, all of these years for me to be ready for a moment like this. But also, like, even when I just look at people who are not on the same level, who act like all crazy oh and all that. Oh my God, like, yeah. Damn. That's a scary And, and though. It's, it's also it's hella weird too. Like, y'all don't know me. Y'all know me. <laughs> I'm a pretty down to earth, humble guy. Yeah, I know people you like humble people don't usually say that, but everyone around me is saying like, "Just you wait, <laughs> just you wait." Oh man, like even certain agents or people that I have meetings with will be like, "We'll talk to my team on the side and be like, oh man, this guy's a sweetheart,' but just you wait." Just really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. I'm like my own dogs. I'm like, oh wow, dang, interesting. So season three of the pod. Uh, we're just gonna have a doing, fucking golden chair. I'm gonna be doing we, remote sunglasses on from Bali we'll every single the episode. Apple glasses. I'm gonna I'm come real Jared Leto on their ass. <laughs> um, like, next excuse time me, around. Jordan, Monica, don't look me in the eye. You can only out. call me Ramario. <laughs> can everyone stay out of my eye line while we do the podcast, please? I, right need, I need to only have water from Norway. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm really curious if I, I just, just wonder what it's gonna be like. I'll write a little journal. Instinctly looked Today, away. Shiloh kicked my shins because I brought in the wrong type of Chick Fil A for him. Yeah, it's the. Yeah, I don't. I really don't know. Huh? I've I been. Know. I've been like... ordering less Postmates though. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. I feel like if there was a point where you would have become an ass, mm-hmm. I think it would have happened already. All right, I'm glad to hear it. My opinion, but I like. I don't know. I feel like it would have. I mean, I get that there's fucking. Like, there's a difference between being, you know, uh, fuck who, Noah Brad. Centineo, and then oh. there's a difference between being Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. Like, both those people are pretty famous, but they act the same. Uh, I wouldn't even say it for that reason, but I guess maybe they kind of do. But there's like levels of fame, I guess. Um, what level of fame is the perfect amount of fame? Who who is like I, ah yes, um, I think oh, I gotta look him up. Like, are in, you like C. Thomas Howell? He's like flea like, bag. He's in C. Flea Thomas bag. Howell lives in like the mountains and only comes out to film roles. Do you want to be like that, or do you want to be like think, Nick Kroll level of famous, where like you're intimately loved by your fans but known by no one else because you have an interesting face? Are you trying to be like Daniel Day Lewis who only comes out of the woodwork to That's do a, a movie one. every few years and then he just goes back? Um I think it would be really cool if you could just like do whatever your passion is and no one would like bug you about it. Or not <laughs> bug, but like you know, you could like do something that you really like and it wasn't like this. You I just, just don't get you, the admiration factor of it. Yeah. You just like, don't understand that. I, yeah, the I just idolization don't. Of- I don't get it. Like, I fucking love certain artists or mm-hmm. certain actors. Like, but they're not a god. Like, there's no reason for me to think they're better than I am. Like, well, my dad art, would always art say Art is something. very divisive in that way. Art, yeah. uh, art, I think. And that is… And I think that kind of is the the interesting thing about art is that… As an artist, whether it's acting, music, 
painting, the moment you deliver the product, it is out of your hands and into the hands and into the eyes of someone else. And therefore, like once I put it out, whether it's music, it's up to everyone else to feel however they want to feel about it. And some people connect very heavily with with certain people. And I, and I just, yeah, I I guess it's hard for us to see it that way, I think, because we're so close to it. Mm-hmm. Because the game has always been like, ah, don't, you don't, you don't show Paul Dano that you like him when you're, you know, or like you just, you got to be a cool guy about yeah. it. And, and it's always like… As an actor, we know that actors don't like being, you know, talked about. So just, you know, be the cool guy and don't yeah. and and don't ask for a picture while you're with him. You yeah. know, because we hate that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, and and even like I was just listening to this conversation with Tyler, Tyler the Creator, speak recently, and he was saying, and and I thought it was interesting too. Tyler was saying like. I hate when people are like uh when see, when they see me out in public, you know, and they've and I've only met them once and they're like my guy. <laughs> and he's like I don't even know you. Like yeah. And I just thought that like it was interesting and I like Tyler. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting and I'm glad that he was honest about his opinion, but a lot of his like the people that brought him up were people like, and this, it led into a bigger conversation of him being kind of annoyed at rap Twitter or about, or about people who talk about what they like, who, who, who say like, these are my top five albums. What are yours? And he's kind of like, you know, why are why are we ranking people's opinions, you know, when it should just, you know, hmm. he the way that can we pull it up really quick actually? Cause I'd love to actually hear the conversation. That's interesting because I, I guess I wouldn't view that as like, oh, we're doing this ranking system. We're saying this is like objectively better than that. I think that's just like a fun conversation thing to have. Well, because like, what well, he was oh, saying is I like, like people rank his albums. Well, they'll say like, I like Flower Boy more than Igor when he's like it should just be art. Like that's that's kind of what I got from the conversation. But let's see. And Jordan, if you want to, have you seen this convo? No, I've seen some parts of it, but I know that's how he feels. Like, did you even? He has this line on on his uh, one of his recent albums where he's like, "I paint full pictures of my perspectives on these drum breaks, just for you to tell me it's not good from your lunch break." <laughs> like he he. Ah, uh, it's the e- it's easy to sit and judge behind the screen, or it's yeah. Easy to- I know he's very much like he talks about when you things don't make like the that art. a lot. Like yeah, if you don't make the art, or I, I relate to yeah, a lot of a lot of creators dogs. just don't like that. Like that rap, tw- yeah, that rap Twitter conversation. Like, what's your top five? You're like, oh, I don't, you know. Like, yeah. So so let's kind of skip through this conversation. I want to get to the meat of what he was saying here, but you know what annoys me when people are like, "This is my top this is top five and people argue it like. Top, you got 17 year olds like, yeah, like, dude, fucking ready to die and enter the Wu Tang is my top 10 album ever. I'm like, bro, you just got hair on your dick. <laughs> Stop. It's performing it. Dude, the kids be doing it with me. They, they, they do a tier list of like mm-hmm. A, B, C, and D of the albums they like of me and then tell people, ask people thoughts. You're asking people their thoughts thoughts on what you hold to your heart what kind of stupid shit is that Mm -hmm. that's why i fucking hate rap twitter Mm -hmm. because everything's performative everyone is making these lists just to have people engage like who gives a fuck who the top three is he's talking about how like if you were to be if you were to say i like a tribe called quest i like wu-tang that you don't know anything about that because you weren't weren't born that Mm -hmm. but Jamiroquai, who he just said was his favorite artist, was at their peak when this dude was one. <laughs> so, like, I, it's it's interesting how, on one hand, it's performative. And, and the thing that I just don't like about the 17-year-olds is that, like, when he was coming up in his odd future days… That's like how old he was. Well, no, no, no. Like, he, he benefited off of a lot of these same 17-year-olds mm-hmm. talking about him and, like, shouting him out. So, it feels kind of like a… Like a shitting on the people who kind of brought you up and I just don't know if I like I don't know on one hand I was like okay maybe when he was saying the whole you know who gives a who gives a crap on on you know your top five why are we asking about the top five I don't know I I think that that's just like that's what art is about 
art is about discussion and yeah, I don't know. I, I I could see like if you were constantly thrown into a discussion of like, oh, top this, top that. This is my favorite. And like, I don't like this one. Like, da, da, da. And you're the person making that art. I could see how that could be frustrating. But at the same point, like you have people who are, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess like you have people who are admiring your art, but he's not making it for those people. So he doesn't really give a shit about what their opinion is anyway. Um, I it, it just feels like a little, a little gatekeepy to be like bro you like a tribe called quest and wu-tang clan but you weren't even born then like yeah you know you were 17 you barely got hair and you're like what the fuck do you know it's like yeah. why why is my age or like yeah how come if i wasn't born then almost all i would say probably almost all of my like top five to ten bands yeah. are all bands i don't really like music now yeah yeah, yeah. Like, all the bands i like are from like, my dad was in high school. Well, yeah, like, no. And that was the thing that I thought was so weird is that he was saying, like, you got Baby, you got Lil Baby and and Dirk out, and your favorite album is Tribe. I was like, what? So was so is, so is Baby, baby? Yeah, like, I was like, what? Yeah. I, was, I was confused. What do y'all think? I think he was, was also kind of saying in, like, if it's performative. Like, you know, there's always those people yeah. that are just like, but how does they he want know to that adver- they're, they're advertise. Business. Well, I think the example at the end is like the rap Twitter when people are like, this is my tier yeah. list of the top albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Best is Biggie and then Now, Pac what do you and- guys think? I think the performative part is like everybody has an opinion and everybody wants to be like, uh, Wu-Tang is, is way better than this because mm-hmm. of blah. No, what do you guys think about my thoughts? It becomes like the performative like part me. is just like, look at me, I'm cool because I like old school. Or yeah. I like this. Or I think that little baby da 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 is not as good as da 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 da. I feel like, especially in hip hop music, when like, the way that they opened up the conversation was like people are always talking about top three, top three. I don't know. I think it's just kind of like a part of the discourse of yeah. the discourse. Yeah. I hate that. I mean, I hate that. Do do you hate when people be like, "What's your top five? Uh, like, I actually, I mean, I. You- I am notoriously someone who has like a lot of favorites. <laughs> like I have a favorite everything. I have a favorite ketchup. I have a favorite every you know whatever. Okay. So I like the favorite conversations for the same reason that Tyler seemingly likes the conversation of what is people's favorite because yeah, you get to know a person that way. But what I'm not a fan of is like, and what I realized I had to stop doing is is then like making negative judgments based on people's favorites. Oh, like what? That's yeah, that's what? what? That's your yeah. favorite? When I realized like, oh shoot, it's just preference. Favorite kind of to what he was saying. Yeah, he was saying yeah. supersedes objective and, and a, in a way that I think should remain precious mm-hmm. to to everyone and and I've had to definitely be more conscious to not be like damn, <laughs> damn your favorite movie is that childish ass movie. <laughs> <laughs> and you're over here like <laughs> Up is a masterpiece. I'm I like, don't know. Up is a masterpiece. Yeah. I mean, up I, is a great fucking movie. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but nope. yeah, I just uh, keep talking about, keep talking about hip hop for sure. But yeah, don't, don't be annoying about it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's for almost anything. But is there any way to not be? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? I like your Tyler Creator story. And with that, um, we will end the podcast. Goodbye. Yeah. Thank you for joining this week's <laughs> episode of the pod. If you, Enjoyed, you know where to find us. Instagram, Reddit, uh, YouTube, Spotify, everywhere. If you type in Lil Lobos, it'll probably pop up. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. We'll see you again next week. Ooh. Ciao. Ciao bacalao. This episode of Lone Lobos is a Lone Lobos production. Produced by Monica Tamayo and JMKM. With intro music by Nicholas Gray. Like what you hear? Check us out on Instagram at Lone Lobos. <laughs>